Today's lesson is going to be on the quotient rule, which is a way for finding the derivative of a quotient of functions. It says that the derivative of f of x divided by g of x is going to be the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. So that may seem a little bit confusing at first, but once we get started, it's going to be pretty simple. Um, here's our first example. They give us the quotient of two functions. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a similar process like you do with the product rule. We're going to make a little list, f, f prime, g, and g prime. f refers to the top function, which in this case is 5x minus 2. The bottom function is x squared plus 1. The derivative of 5x minus 2 is 5. And the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So these are our puzzle pieces. There are components which we plug into this formula, which looks a little scary, but it's really not that big of a deal. So let's do it. The derivative can be found by using the bottom function, which is x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the, of the top function, which is 5, minus the top function, which is 5x minus 2, times the derivative of the bottom function, which is 2x. And this is all going to be over the bottom function squared. Okay, so once again, in this little technique I'm about to show you could help people. Um, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Some people choose to think about it as the product of the inner functions minus the product of the outer functions when written in this way. If that helps you, then go for it. So we're going to clean up a little bit here. And we end up getting uh, 5x squared plus 5 and then we have minus 10x squared plus 4x. And all of this is going to be over x squared plus 1 squared. We just a little bit more cleanup to do and we'll be done with this problem. So it looks like we end up with negative 5x squared plus 4x uh, plus 5. And this is all over x squared plus 1 squared. And this is it. This is a very typical looking answer when you're using the quotient rule. It's uh, not unusual to have this denominator squared, and you're not going to want to foil that out. You're just going to leave that alone. So that's pretty much it. So let's try a second one. In our second example, they give us a complex fraction. and I think it's going to be our best bet to just get rid of the complexity of that from the start and then we will work on the result. So I think what I'm going to do is partition the whole problem off and multiply by a useful form of 1, which in this case is going to be x over x. In doing this, I'll be able to rewrite this function in a much simpler manner. It's just going to become 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 5x. Okay, so let me make this one a little bigger. All right, I'm going to make my list again. f, f prime, g, g prime. All right. So f is the top function, which is 3x minus 1. g is the bottom function, which is x squared plus 5x. The derivative of 3x minus 1 is 3. The derivative of x squared plus 5x is 2x plus 5. These are our puzzle pieces for our derivative. So I think in the interest of room, I'm going to just set a little area aside here. The derivative is going to be the bottom function, x squared plus 5x times the derivative of the top function, which is 3, minus the top function, 
which is 3x minus 1 times the derivative of the bottom function, which is 2x plus 5. And this is all going to be over the denominator, x squared plus 5x squared. All right, now we've got to clean up. <clears throat> we'll start with some distribution. 3x squared plus 15x. Now I'm going to FOIL and distribute this negative through all at the same time, so I'm going to go a little bit slow. We would start with 6x squared, so I'm going to write minus 6x squared. Outer and the inner would be positive 13x, so I'll write down negative 13x. And it would end with minus 5, so I'm going to write plus 5. And this is going to be all over the denominator squared, x squared plus 5x squared. And then finally, I think I'll write it up here. The derivative is going to be the sum of all my squared terms, which is going to be negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 all over x squared plus 5x quantity squared. So that's the derivative using the quotient rule. So we saw two examples of that. Not too bad. It looks a little scary at points, but just know that they all kind of look like this in the end with this denominator squared. And again, this little tidbit here, some people who set it up this way like to say it's the product of these inside functions minus the product of these outside functions. So that might help, so feel free to use that. So now I'm going to show you uh, a few things that look like they would probably use the quotient rule, but don't actually use the quotient rule. Um, in the last two examples, we, we saw the quotient rule, and it's, it can be a little bit cumbersome, so if you can avoid it, it might be a good thing. So take a look at these examples with me. In number one, we've got a fraction, so you might be thinking, okay, I need to use the quotient rule. However, if you do what I call a mu, M-O-O, -O, many over one, this problem can be rewritten in the following way. One-sixth x squared plus one-half x. So this just becomes very simple to take the derivative of. So with the little bit of room that I have over here, I'm going to say that the derivative is 1 third x plus 1 half. Done, simple, easy, no quotient rule. Similar sort of thing happens here. It looks like you've got a fraction. You might need to use the quotient rule. But really, this is going to be the same as 5 eighths x to the fourth. Very, very simple. The derivative of this is going to become 5 halves x cubed. Again, very easy, no quotient rule. You just have to at least consider rewriting it first. Here, let's see if I distribute, maybe use the mu rule, maybe it'll become something nice and easy. So if I distribute first, I get negative 9x plus 6x squared all over 7x. Now if I use the mu rule on this, many over 1, I end up getting negative 9 sevenths plus 6 sevenths x. Very easy to take the derivative of this. So the derivative just ends up being 6 sevenths. Finally, I can rewrite this as 9 over 5 times x to the negative 2. I'll take that x power and move it up, making it negative. Now the derivative becomes negative 18 fifths x to the negative 3. But since we can't leave a final answer with negative exponents, I'm just going to take care of that and say that the answer is negative 18 over 5x cubed. So 
just seeing a fraction doesn't guarantee that you're going to use the quotient rule. And if possible, you should try to avoid it because it can be a little bit cumbersome. So here are four examples that looked like they may have been tempting to use the quotient rule, but in the end, you didn't have to.